All right, number eight, moving right along. The architect's fee is often calculated using a percentage of the overall construction cost. Right? It's sort of one of the typical ways. There's a bunch of ways you can do it. You can also calculate the fees by just figuring out how many hours it takes. Um, back in the old days, um, we would think of it as sheets because you literally drew each sheet and you would actually start to say, well, this is going to take uh, 20 sheets and each sheet is worth X amount of time, therefore we'll charge this much for the, uh, for the project. Uh, these days, you know, things, because it's so easy to manipulate them, you don't really think of things in sheets anymore in that same way, so you wouldn't really use that. Um, so, uh, you would use probably an hourly guess, something along those lines. So there's a bunch of ways you can do it, but one of the old tried and true ones is thinking of it as a percentage of the overall construction cost. Um, so, we have a couple of potential answers here, typically about 10% would go to the architect uh, of the overall construction cost. Uh, B would be smaller projects typically have smaller percentages. C is residential projects typically have smaller percentages. And D, larger projects typically have smaller percentages. Um, the 10% is uh, not a bad sort of typical, um, but it's a little high. Uh, and let me run through the other ones just to kind of be clear. Uh, let's look at C first. So when you start thinking about a residential project, uh, it depends obviously on what kind of residential project. Is it uh, spec residential or is it uh, for a specific family? Um, but residential is a lot of detail. There's a lot of like uh, people, you know, people are gonna live there. They really want to know about like how their place is going to work. So residential, actually, the, the percentages usually go up a little bit. There's a lot of walls, there's a lot of understandings, a lot of egress issues. Um, there's a lot of very specific issues you have to be very careful about. So C is definitely not right because uh, for residential projects, the percentage actually is a little bit bigger, usually, for the same scale of project. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, like I said, 10%, a little high, so it's not A. So then the question is B or D. Smaller projects typically have smaller percentages or larger projects typically have smaller percentages. And the answer is D. And the reason for that is that, uh, you know, let, let's think of it as a, a small office versus a big office or a small house versus a big house. Um, let's do a small, let's do house. It's probably easier to picture. Uh, so you have a small house, that small house still has a bathroom and still has a kitchen and it still has a front door and siding materials and it still has a roof to wall relationship and it still has uh, a basement maybe and uh, like the way that the walls of the foundation meet the walls of the thing. It has, even if it's small, it has all the, the difficult things in it. You know, you're going to spend a lot of time thinking about the kitchens and how the bathrooms work, all of that. Whereas a larger um, uh, house is still going to have a kitchen. It might have multiple bathrooms, but it's still going to be a sort of bathroom. It's still going to have the way the wall meets the roof. It's still going to have all those same issues. So as the project gets smaller, I can't just keep doing it as a percentage off. Like I, at some point, it gets smaller. It actually takes more of a percentage to get it all to work. So smaller projects, the percent actually goes up. Larger projects, the percent goes down. So for example, if you're doing a single family house, you might be doing it for uh, like a custom house. You might be doing that single family custom house anywhere from a, say 12% up to 15, 16% of the construction cost. If you're Rem Koolhaas or somebody like that, it's probably 20%, but uh, for the rest of us, 15 is probably about the maximum you'll ever get. Um, so that's a pretty reasonable percentage out of that. But let's say, okay, you're not doing that. Let's say instead it's uh, 100 units of housing. Um, well, that 100 units of housing, you're probably getting something more like 2% uh, because it's bigger and you're getting a lot of uh, the ability to do a couple of different kitchens and then use them for all 100 units. You're doing a few bathrooms and then using them for all the units. So you're able to get the economy of scale and so people just aren't going to be willing to pay you that same percentage number. So D, larger projects typically have smaller percentages. Mm -hmm.